The NFL trade deadline is coming up, a very spooky trade deadline on Halloween, October 31st. What do you think the Cowboys may or may not do? Uh, there's conflicting reports from uh, big shot media guys who are friends of the show, guys we trust. Uh, first comes Jay Glazer mm -hmm. of Fox Sports, very plugged into this front office. Yeah. He's you know drinking buddies with this front <laughs> office, literally. Yeah. Uh, and he says, nah, no, no action, nothing cooking, nothing going on. And then Jordan Schultz, our friend, who's very plugged into the NFL, mm -hmm. says uh, the Cowboys are going to be aggressive and want to be buyers. Mm -hmm. And so I don't blame Cowboy Nation for reacting to that going, which is it? Yeah. And, and the, like hoping that they're buyers? <laughs> certainly hoping for the latter because everybody yeah. wants a new, uh, I, I like to say everybody wants a new president under the tree at Christmas. In this case, everybody wants fresh candy. Some, a uh, treat for Halloween. On Halloween. Yes. And, but they're both right. Mm -hmm. um, Glazier's not lying when he says, ah, you know, inactive. But he's talking about the now, mm -hmm. and Jordan Schultz is talking about the then. We still have plenty of time for activity to happen. There's, without any question, the Cowboys and the Broncos will be on the phone. Okay. Broncos are in fire sale mode. Uh, the Cowboys, uh, and I've been told this repeatedly now, but a, a source, an NFL source, will put it this way, they still love Patrick Sertan, okay. just like they did in that draft. That, uh, that doesn't mean you can get him, um, he's, he's viewed in some uh, circles as untouchable in Denver, and he, I mean, he should be. He's a 23-year-old, first-round, young, on a cheap contract, pro bowler. Yeah. Uh, why would they give him away? They're, they're bad, but they shouldn't give away their great young players. But you, you can see why the Cowboys would be calling. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and they can be on the phone talking to them about a couple, a couple of their linebackers, the wide receivers that have been discussed, discussed for years, Judy and Cortland Sutton. Uh, Cowboys called on Jerry Judy last year and made an offer mm -hmm. at the trade deadline. I was told it was a second round pick. Um, and Cortland Sutton, of course, Texas guy and from SMU. So there's a lot of sense to being on the phone with the Broncos. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go another way. While the Cowboys were certainly against, and I understood and kind of supported the view in the off season, hey, we, are, we have a $10 million running back. Mm -hmm. You just don't have two $10 million running backs. Yeah. Well, now we're advancing towards the middle of the season when it wouldn't cost you 10 million anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, when some teams might give him to you, uh, and when you should be exploring the the reality that well, Tony Pollard, it's not that he's done anything wrong, but you don't have answers in the red zone, and, and maybe you need to be better in that regard. And there's so, a lot of talented running backs out there. Right? Well, the Tennessee Titans, are they giving up the season? Derrick Henry, people are going to call the Titans about Derrick Henry, and the Cowboys should call and see. Um, James Conner is somebody that we've talked about and written about at CowboysSI.com. Now, he's on IR in Arizona, but they stink. They have no need for him. They might just give him to you. Yeah. So you got to make that phone call. Uh, I had somebody uh, today say, what are the Giants going to do with Saquon Barkley? Mm. He's on a one-year contract. Yeah. I think it's $11 million. They're not good. Uh, uh, if, they, if they lose this weekend... Um, they will have started the season, whatever, with, with one win in the first almost two months of the season. Yeah. What do they need with Saquon Barkley? Uh, the idea that the Giants would trade Barkley in the division to Dallas, I think that's far-fetched. Yeah, <laughs> but, but running back names yeah. being discussed here on short-term rentals, where I don't have to give them $10 million, the Cowboys should put that on their list of things to maybe do. Dallas Cowboys star linebacker Micah Parsons has a lot to say, and most recently he is saying, why don't critics bring the same energy to the Eagles that they bring to the Cowboys, saying he's tired of all the Dak hate. Now, what are your thoughts on Parsons' comments? He's right about the double standard. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular week, Dak Prescott is getting more criticism for a, for a clutch win <laughs> than Jalen Hurts is getting for throwing three interceptions in a preposterous Eagles loss. So he's right about that. Yeah. And of course, it's not just the Eagles, it's across the board. Uh, national media, they don't do segments on, how's the Buccaneers quarterback doing? <laughs> they, they don't even know who the Buccaneers quarterback is. It's Baker Mayfield, by the way. <laughs> uh, that, that's a cowboy thing. And so Micah's right about that. Mm -hmm. Here's the part he's wrong about. Micah, why do you care? And it's gonna keep happening. And, and the more that you object to it, the more you're giving them segments. In fact, again, that's, that's happening as we speak now. Mm -hmm. National media people on ESPN and on Fox, people that don't even have, uh, they, they, I didn't think they had an ax to grind, nor do they have a horse in the race. Uh, somebody named Kimberly Martin, mm -hmm. I don't know, 
is like challenging Dak. I mean, I'm sorry, challenging Micah, yeah. saying, why don't you show the same energy and get to the Super Bowl like the Eagles did? Whoa, he's not wrong yeah. in, his, in having the thought in his head. Yeah. What he's wrong about is having the thought in his head come out of his mouth because there's nothing good that, that can come of it. America's team, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. this is the way it's gonna be. You, you get the praise and you have to take the abuse and fighting back against the abuse just brings more abuse. Mm -hmm. An interesting fact so far in this NFL season, and that's the three most watched Fox broadcasts include the New York Jets. Yes. Which has some saying, wait a minute, are the Jets America's team? Tell me why these people are wrong. Okay, first of all, <laughs> the, and, and I've made this point for years and years and years. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter if the Cowboys have a bad year. America's team is a thing that isn't attached to your record. Right. Um, my, my, one of my best examples is the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. I, I don't know if their defense is, uh, their defense isn't what it was in the 70s. They still get to be called the Steel Curtain. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. The, the Buccaneers and the Ravens and the Patriots can't have a good pass rush and say, I guess now we're the Steel Curtain. <laughs> so the Jets are not America's team. They can be America's team of the month. Mm -hmm. if, if you think this is some sort of a traveling trophy that everybody hands out every week, like NFC Offensive Player of the Week, fine. The, the Jets are the AFC America's team, team of the week. But Dallas Cowboys is like Bronx Bombers or purple people eaters, or the steel curtain. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it just is. Uh, what's the nickname for Texas? The Lone Star State. No, I decided that New Mexico now wants to be the Lone, <laughs> because they have a star as well. So why can't we be the Lone Star State? Arizona has a star on its flag, doesn't it? Well, well I guess we're the Arizona, we're the Lone Star. It, it's, it doesn't, it's not transferable. Yeah. It's owned by this franchise, for better or for worse. It's yeah. not always for better. Uh, um, we've written about, by the way, at CowboysSI.com, the history of how this came about in 1978, NFL Films, and embraced by Tech Schramm, and then um, embraced times a million by Jerry Jones. There, there's some burden that comes with it, but it is yours, Cowboy Nation, and it cannot be taken away from you. There you go. The MVP race is wide open through two months of NFL action. We headed into the season with Patrick Mahomes circled, Joe Burrow circled, among others. Who do you think is really leading the race? Uh, I, I think the guy to keep an eye on is Josh Allen. Mm. Um, they, they are right, the Bills are right on the lip of the cup year after year after year. Yeah, Not, they can always win their division. <laughs> right, and, and they have three straight times. Now, they face a challenge this year from Miami, and uh, if that offense keeps putting up these kind of numbers and their record keeps holding up the way it is, then Tua uh, is an MVP candidate. Very interesting. Um, we can have some fun with, well, what about non-quarterbacks? Well, what about non-quarterbacks? Because that's not the way it works. <laughs> not since Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson had to rush for 2,000 yards <laughs> to break the, the chain and the trend of quarterbacks being MVPs. But Tyreek Hill in Miami, uh, as, yeah. as fans of the Bills and the Patriots that have to deal with him twice a year, mm -hmm. they recognize uh, how, how special and how troublesome he is. Maybe they should have a non-quarterback MVP of the league. They, and they, we, we have, uh, because of NFL honors, we've got an you know, offensive player True. of the year. And, um, you know, Micah Parsons of the Cowboys has campaigned, and sometimes it's about him, but mm -hmm. maybe it's about a, a wider angle. Why does it always, why, why can't a linebacker, why can't a pass rusher be as valuable as a quarterback? Yeah. And, and of course the answer is because they're not, because they can't. <laughs> you just don't touch the ball as much. It, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but in, a, in what is a quarterback award, um, the Ravens, I, I, I see some people complaining about some of the things that Lamar Jackson does not do. Uh, I just look at all the things that he does do. Yeah. Uh, and, and he is the, and again, the Ravens have a very good defense too, but he is the singular centerpiece reason why the Ravens are good again. Uh, uh, Josh Allen in this mix as well. Uh, and, and you're right about it being a close race. Mm -hmm. Um, there's nobody, there's no individual that statistically is pulling away, not even Maybe Patrick Mahomes. Maybe not an undefeated team. Maybe that's why. Right. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes has only one weapon on his entire <laughs> offense. Maybe if, maybe if the Chiefs would get him two weapons. Maybe you've heard of him, Travis Kelsey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>